This will be a day long remembered. Now I am the master. Welcome to another episode of Legends and Theories. An Imperial shuttle approaches the world of Wayland. And as it approaches Mount Tantus, it is taken out by a storm and crash lands. The Imperials call for backup, but Dr. Hemlock, knowing that there is no point in saving them because they are already dead, refuses to send forces out. Now imprisoned, Omega looks upon the forests of Wayland out of Mount Tantus and longs to escape. There she is weird by Dr. Emery, who has her go through many different procedures. She goes on passing by Crosshair, who seems extremely depressed as she passes by him. She then goes in and hopes Dr. Emery gets samples from different clones. And that day she is getting a sample of Omega also. Omega then goes to Nalase's lab where she comes in and brings the samples to her. Nalase is then very nervous when she realizes they took a sample from Omega and quickly destroys it, explaining to Omega that she could tell nobody about this because it would put her in danger. Omega then asks her why she's here, and Nalase explains that she's here to motivate her, and Omega is a little disappointed by this, but then continues on with helping Nalase in her research until she is pulled away to meet with Dr. Hemlock. She then goes and begins to feed some of the creatures that the Empire uses to go on patrols. And with one of them, one she is named Badger, seems to not be wanting the food, so she gives him some of her food, then steals a little bit of straw to do something in her room. Then on her way back, she passes by across herself for the first time, telling him that she is sorry that she hasn't been able to stop by sooner, but she has had too many guards on her. She then begins to discuss with Crosshair about escape, and Crosshair tells her that she shouldn't save him, and if he had a chance to escape, he would just leave her behind without a second thought. Omega does not believe him and heads back to her cell. Omega once again looks out the window at the forests of Wayland, but then uses the straw she took to create a doll for herself. The next day, she once again follows through the same procedure, crossing by crosshair, going to Nalase where her blood sample is destroyed, and then once again going to the pens where she realizes that Batcher was injured. She wants to help him, but the droid that supervises the room refuses, saying it is not a medical droid, and Batcher will be put down if it doesn't heal. And Omega does not want this, so she goes and uses medical supplies to heal him. Then she meets with Crosshair, who tells her that she shouldn't be focusing on helping Batcher or anyone else. She should just be focusing on her own escape if that's what she wants. Omega, once again, doesn't really believe that he believes this. She then returns to her room where, the next morning, Dr. Emery comes in with a clone commando unit who searches through her room and eventually figures out that she has her doll. Dr. Emery takes it, saying that Omega is not allowed to have anything, and... She takes the doll with her, and after this, Omega once again goes through the exact same procedure until she gets to Batcher and realizes that not only did he fully heal, but he is a lot more friendly. This is something that excites her until the droid supervisor mentions that Batcher is going to be terminated for becoming docile. Omega begs him not to, saying that it's her fault. The droid ignores her, and Omega steals his data pad. Trying to set Batra free, the droid begins to attack her. She uses the data pad to drop 
a crate at him, crushing him. She then sets Batra free and lets him go off. As Dr. Hemlock arrives just after this, he is very disappointed in Omega and says what she did was very cruel. Omega is confused and he tells her how she just gave him a death sentence and it would have been a lot more humane for them to put him down. Omega says that it is giving him a chance with them already going to kill him. Hemlock completely ignores her and the hypocrisy of the situation and tells her that he's going to lock her up. Omega says that there is nothing that he could do to harm her since she is leveraged against Nelise. Hemlock only coldly replies that instead he'll be torturing Crosshair if she ever does anything that displeases him. Omega is horrified by this, saying he can't, but Hemlock, being the monster he is, just simply ignores her and has her sent back to her cell. There, Omega is crying about this, and Dr. Emery, seeing how the, bad the day was, decides to return Omega's doll to her. Omega once again looks out upon the jungles of Wayland. At the same time, Batra goes and reaches the crashed Imperial shuttle and begins to howl. On the other side of the galaxy, at the Duran family fortress, the Duran family is going through many procedures with different people. One of them is a guard who betrayed them. And this guard definitely shows no mercy and, although tries to lie, is caught when he is told that his fellow conspirators have confessed everything. He is then executed as the next people are brought in. This is Hunter and Wrecker bringing the pike that cut off the younger Duran's horn, and he is pleased by this. The mother and head of the family thanks the Bad Batch for their help, saying they must be truly desperate to want to cross the Pike Syndicate. And the Bad Batch mentions that they just need the information they're here for to be able to save a member of their crew. And they are given this intel and head out to go to a potential location of Dr. Hemlock's lab. On board the Marauder, Wrecker says that they should wait for Rex and Echo to be available. He points out that the last time they tried to disturb an Imperial compound, not all of them made it back. But being desperate to save Omega, Hunter refuses, saying that they better wait too long. And the two of them go to this planet. Going and landing, they manage to find the facility, which has been destroyed by orbital bombardment. They then are confronted by two younger men, who they realize are clone cadets. They begin to question them to why they are here, and they mention that they were brought here and experimented on, but managed to escape when the facility was being abandoned. They agree to take the Bad Batch to their leader, and then tell them to make sure to follow the path and not touch any of the vines. Wrecker, of course, ignores this and does touch one of them, which nearly kills him. Hunter is able to save him, and they discover that these vines were part of an Imperial project that went rogue, and that is the reason this base was destroyed. So, they then go and meet with the final clone cadet, and the three of them discuss with the Bad Batch the facility and everything going on there, and how there is a single working data port from what they could tell while they were exploring it, but they couldn't go back anymore. The Bad Batch wanted to go there, and the three cadets are reluctant, but one of them, named Deke, decides to go and show them the way there and bring them to the panel. The Bad Batch are thankful, and they go off to the base. But first, stop at the Marauder to pick up Ganki to be able to power up the terminal. They then go and begin to explore and find many different dangers in there. Deke is nearly killed, but the Bad Batch are able to save him. 
then back at the cave, the other two clone cadets, who are named Max and Stack, consider leaving on the Bad Batch's shuttle. They begin to talk about it and how they'd be no different than the Empire, but realize if they wait too long that the vines will reach the shuttle and destroy it. So they decided to head to the ship and see what they would do from there. The Bad Batch get to the terminal and attach Donkey to it. They have Deke go and pull the information and load it onto a data pad as they fend off vines. They go and call for assistance, which is picked up by the other two young cadets who have already made it to the Marauder and are considering once again leaving the Bad Batch and their fellow cadet behind. The Bad Batch realizing that they're out of time pull the data pad with whatever data it could get and grab Gonky and run for it. Heading for the exit to the facility they begin to climb up seeing this is the best way as the vines begin to chase them. As they reach the top they find the marauder above who is implanted by one of the cadets as the other lowers down the winches to them so they could get up. Sadly, they aren't able to escape fully as the vines wrap around the marauder and is holding it in place. Hunter and Wrecker try to get it off of the ship, but they aren't able to do anything. Realizing that the explosive that Wrecker has isn't enough, they ask the cadets who now are all on board the ship to dump their crate of explosives into it. Doing so, they drop it in and drop in one final detonator as it goes in. An explosion goes off, forcing the creature to let go and letting the cadets and Bad Batch escape. The kids and the Bad Batch go and celebrate this small victory as they look at the fact they do have a system to start looking in, but not an exact location. They tell the kids that they'll be dropping them off on a small island where they will be able to be safe and protected by good people. Returning to Tantus, we see that Omega once again goes through the same procedures as we can see a little bit more of where Crosshair is coming from as we see a mysterious ar trooper in armor watching them. We then see Omega once again getting a blood sample taken but Nalise isn't able to operate on it at all because Dr. Hemlock says they have a very important visitor coming and Nalise must go to meet him. Although she tries to get into a place where she could destroy Omega's blood sample, she realizes it is impossible. She then goes to finish up something that she was working on, but tells Omega behind her back that she has to go and escape today because once the Empire is able to analyze her blood she'll be in great danger. She tells her to take her data pad and use it to escape. Omega understands as she watches now say leave. Omega goes and enters into the lab where she begins to talk to Dr. Emery who thinks Omega isn't feeling well and tells her to take the day off and return to her room. Omega does leave but does manage to steal Nalise's data pad. Taking it she prepares her escape. Meanwhile above Wayland an Imperial shuttle surrounded by multiple V-wings comes in. This lands at Mount Tantus and out steps Emperor Palpatine. Hemlock is honored to have the Emperor there. Meanwhile, Omega begins to plan her escape using the data pad to open a turbo lift to go down to Crosshair's level. Reaching the level, she goes to Crosshair's cell and tells him to cause a distraction. Crosshair does and orders one of the TK troopers to come over. Wanting to see what this is about, the trooper does come over and Crosshair demands for him to let him out and give him his weapon. 
the trooper thinks that Crosshair is losing it, saying that he doesn't outrank him. The cell door then opens, and Crosshair easily takes the TK trooper out and helps take out the other one. Omega then goes and grabs the data pad back, and they begin their escape. As they move through the halls, they hide in cover where they find a patrol of TK troopers who are complaining about the extra duties, but realize that with the Emperor being here, that they have no real choice in the matter. Crosshair is in shock, saying to Omega that he was wondering if she knew that the Emperor was here. She says that she didn't know, and Crosshair begins to berate her for winging this plan, but Omega says that she has no choice and has to escape now. Palpatine reaches deeper into sight of Tantus, into the main operation of the facility. Here he looks upon many different innovations as Dr. Hamlock shows him inside one of the test tubes they have. He tells Palpatine that they are doing their best to replicate the Metachlorian count of a being in a clone and they are going to be continuing to do their best at this. Palpatine is very pleased with their progress so far and begins to congratulate Dr. Hemlock on his work so far, telling him he has to keep this completely confidential because there are many, even within the Empire, that would condemn his work. Meanwhile, back at the lab, Omega's sample gets closer and closer to being analyzed. Dr. Emery returns to Omega's room to check on her. Seeing she is not there and realizing what is going on, she goes to find her. Omega and Crosshair reach the pens where they take out the droid that is guarding the room. They then go and prepare for their escape using the tunnels that the creatures escape through to go on the hunt to escape themselves. Omega mentions the ray shields and they'll have to be fast when they escape. But they are then confirmed by Emery who tells them that if they drop their weapons now and return to their cells that she won't report any of this. They disagree and Crosshair stuns her. But Emery did set off a beacon letting everyone know that an escape attempt is in progress. Meanwhile, Palpatine, preparing to leave, once again expresses how important it is for Dr. Hemlock to not have his work discovered and keep Mount Tantus secure. He then goes and tells Hemlock that this is one of the most important things to secure the future of the Empire. Hemlock tries to get a promotion out of Palpatine, but Palpatine says it will happen all in due time and goes to leave and return to Coruscant. Hemlock is then informed by Scorch about the escape attempt in progress and he orders a lockdown of the facility. The ray shields begin to go up and Omega and Crosshair are just barely able to escape out of the facility. Making it into the woods, Omega says that they should go towards a shuttle that crashed when she first arrived at the facility. Crosshair wonders what they could do from that, but Omega thinks they could get the comms operational and be able to contact Hunter to rescue them. The creatures are released to hunt them down, and Hemlock begins to monologue to Emery and Alice how they cannot let them escape and have to use any means necessary to recapture them. Nalise is then questioned by Hemlock about her participation in Omega's escape, and Nalise mentions that she is not guilty of anything, and she has been with Hemlock all day. Hemlock is still suspicious of her, and orders for her to be returned to her cell. As he does this, he has multiple squads of troopers going out after them in Imperial ships. Omega and Crosshair are encountering one of the many deadly predators in Wayland's jungle that Omega was told about by Dr. Hemlock 
when she let Thatcher free. But thankfully, they are basically rescued when the creature sent after them by Hemlock encounters this creature and the two begin to fight. Using this as a distraction, they escape and, using the trajectory of Palpatine's shuttle, use it to figure out a flight path and go along it until they find the Imperial shuttle, which Omega begins to power up. Meanwhile, Dr. Emery returns to working on the clone's blood, and while she does it, Omega's blood gets even closer to being the one that is analyzed. Meanwhile, back at the ship, Omega realizes that there is no way for them to be able to fix the comms unit and apologizes to Crosshair for putting them in this situation. But finally seeing Hope, Crosshair goes and tells Omega that it is fine and that they now have a chance as he sees the Imperial ship's approach. Clone commandos alongside multiple TK troopers exit and Omega and Crosshair execute one of the Bad Batch's plans, which involves Crosshair distracting the troopers as Omega steals the shuttle. This plan works out and Omega is able to take one of the Imperial shuttles. She then uses it to take out Many of the troopers pinning down Crosshair, lets Crosshair aboard and has him go up to the cockpit as she goes down and calls her Batcher. Meanwhile, multiple viewing fighters are launched as Omega, alongside Batcher and Crosshair, manage to escape and fly out of the planet's atmosphere. They are pursued by V-Wings and are fired at by the turbo lasers. At the same time as this, Dr. Emery discovers that Omega's blood will be able to work alongside their experiments and rushes to tell Dr. Hemlock that they cannot kill Omega. The Imperial shuttle is hit by one of the turbo laser blasts and Emery makes it just in time to tell Dr. Hemlock that they cannot kill a man, that the blood of Omega is going to work with their experiments, knowing that they have a better chance of continuing these experiments if they recapture them and are able to track them down. Hemlock orders for the Imperial forces to break off the pursuit and not fire anymore. This gives Omega and Crosshair the chance to escape and go to hyperspace. But Hemlock explains that this is no victory as they have the full resources of the Empire to go and track the two down. Although Omega and Crosshair have managed to escape Mount Tantus in the world of Wayland, the shuttle they've escaped in has sustained heavy damage and isn't able to stay in hyperspace for long. They are then forced to crash land on a nearby planet and... After crashing, Omega tries to go and pull out Wayland's coordinates, but Crosshair tells her that they don't have enough time, the Empire is coming, and they shouldn't be going back there. Omega reluctantly agrees and goes on with Crosshair towards a spaceport, which Crosshair was able to identify during the crash. They then head off to the spaceport. Meanwhile, Dr. Hemlock begins to interrogate Nalise, demanding to know why all the tests she took would have came up negative for Omega. Nalise tries to lie and say that this was a false positive. Hemlock, not believing her, tells her once they recapture Omega, they will see who is right, and tells Nalise that she is no longer safe. Omega and Crosshair reach the spaceport, where they begin to see that there is a heavy Imperial presence here. Omega stops Crosshair from moving on and tells him that they need to find disguises. They go and take some clothing from different locations throughout the city. And using it to hide themselves, they begin to head towards the spaceport. And reaching it, they see that it is heavily guarded by troopers 
and there was no way for them to get through. Crosshair says that they could take out about half of the troopers here before they realize what's going on, but wanting a less violent solution, Omega goes and goes to the receptionist and begins to ask how much tickets are. She then negotiates with the receptionist, telling them they lost their train codes and there has to be another way on. The receptionist asks if they are trying to bribe him, and Omega says if that's what he wants to call it. The receptionist agrees and tells him it'll be 1,500 credits each. Omega asks how they're supposed to get that, and the receptionist tells him it's not his problem. Omega then goes with Crosshair to try and find a way to get the credits. They then find the cantina and go in. Omega thinks that she could go win a lot of money from playing cards. And Crosshair asks what would happen if she loses, since they have nothing to bet with. Omega says that'll be a problem for them, and then goes to play. She begins playing with the Trandoshan and easily begins to beat him in the game. An Imperial officer enters into the cantina and is told about Omega and her winning streak. Seeing this as an easy win, he demands for the Trandoshan to leave. The Trandoshan reluctantly agrees, and Omega and the Imperial begin to play. The Imperials then go and discover the wreckage of the ship that Omega and Crosshair escaped in, and go to contact their leader. The Imperial, annoyed by Batcher, demands for Omega to take him outside. She asks Crosshair to do this, and they continue their game. The Imperial eventually gets to a point where he thinks he is won, but Omega reveals that she actually has a better hand and wins the game. The Imperial then has his troops come up and tell Omega that she is gambling and that is illegal. He has to collect a 10,000 credit fine from her. Although Crosshair goes to attack the Imperial, Omega holds him back and pays him. The Imperial is satisfied and walks off. Crosshair then asks how much money she has. Omega tells him that she has 3,500 credits and that will be enough to cover both of their tickets, plus with a little bit extra. They then go out and realize that Batcher has been taken and... Desperate to know what happened, Omega asks a local who saw it. He originally says that he'll do it for no less than 10,000, but Crosshair has an intimidating look at him and makes him drop it down to 5,000. He then tells Omega that the Imperials took Batcher and he leaves after being paid. Omega then wants to go and save him while Crosshair just wants to get out of there. Furious with this, Omega just tosses the credits to him and tells him that she'll go save Batcher himself and he can get himself out if he wants. Crosshair turns and watches her go and debates on what to do. He eventually chooses to do the right thing and go help Omega. The two go into the Imperial facility and notice where Batcher is, but the Imperial, who has been informed about the shuttle crash, goes and tells them that they really thought that they could get away with this. He told them to give him all the money and then they will be recaptured by Hemlock since they won't need the money. Omega reluctantly slides the money to him and tells Crosshair that they could do things his way now. Crosshair opens fire and begins to take down troopers, also using ricochets to open the pens and be willing to release all the creatures that were captured by the Imperial. Batcher joins Omega, and the two begin to steal the Imperial cargo shuttle. The Imperial tries to follow them, but Crosshair knocks open another one of the containers. A large tentacle comes out of it and grabs the Imperial. It drags him in and likely kills him. And then Crosshair goes 
and joins Omega on the ship, and they take off and manage to flee the planet. Hemlock arrives and begins to investigate the crash site. He learns that Omega and Crosshair were here, but they managed to escape in a cargo shuttle. He then demands for the shuttle to be tracked, and then goes to return to Tantis. Meanwhile, Omega and Crosshair, who have managed to escape, are taking a moment to rest, and then Crosshair tells her they need to find a way to ditch the ship because the Imperials will be able to track it. Omega says that she already knows, and used a coded transmission to contact Hunter and Wrecker so they can set up a meeting to get them out of there. They go and land where they see the Marauder. Omega goes out and first unites with Wrecker, then with Hunter. She then is asked how she was managed to escape. She said she has help as Crosshair looks out on them and they stare at Crosshair. Omega wakes up on the Marauder and is happy to once again be with her brothers. She goes and talks to Hunter and Wrecker, who once again tell how glad they are to have her back, and she asks where Crosshair is, and they tell her that he is down practicing on the beach. Omega goes down and first unites with Batcher, then goes to Crosshair, who is, as she was told, practicing his sniping. She begins to talk to him about his relationship with Hunter and how that he has to go and talk to him to fix things up since Hunter clearly doesn't trust him. And this is proven as both Hunter and Wrecker are watching the two and discussing what is going on and their trust for Crosshair. Wrecker is willing to forgive him and believe he has been redeemed since Omega did trust him and he was able to get her out. But Hunter is far more reluctant and doesn't fully trust him. AP then goes and tells Crosshair that his accuracy rating is far further down from usual as Crosshair continues to have to deal with the tremor he has. Omega reunites with Echo who wants to debrief them on what has happened. He then goes and begins to talk to both Crosshair and Omega about their escape from Pantis and tries to get all the details from them. Although they do give it, Echo would like more of the information and is given Nalise's data pad. They aren't able to access it and need to go to an Imperial base to be able to connect it to the Imperial servers. Crosshair tells him that he knows of a base that has low security, and Hunter asks Omega and Wrecker to stay behind because he doesn't want to risk losing Omega again. But she is able to convince him to go, and as they are preparing to leave, Omega begins to talk with Crosshair again. Once they're bringing up, he needs to try and fix things up with Hunter, and Crosshair says that he doesn't think she should be going because she's just a kid. Omega then points out that she's actually older than him due to his accelerated aging. He is younger than her and she then goes into the ship while Wrecker comes out and returns Crosshair's old armor to him. They make it to the outpost where Crosshair executed the Imperial for letting Mayday die. And after they all exit out, they go to the base, noticing the sensors are still up. Hunter begins to get into another argument with Crosshair. And Crosshair brings up that he didn't know that the base was abandoned. Or really any of this, because he wouldn't be getting updates on this when he was in prison. Breaking things up, Echo tells them that they could go and kill each other later. That they have a mission to do, and they go on to the facility. After unburying the exit, which has been covered with snow, the Bad Batch go and enter into the main facility, and when they're, they 
begin to try and decrypt the data pad, but they can't do it with the power in the facility. Since it is being sent mainly to the perimeter sensors, they turn those off and begin to download the information from the data pad. While they do this, Crosshair goes and fixes the helmet memorial to Mayday and his men, placing the helmets back in their places of honor to honor the clone who helped him realize what the Empire truly was and respect the other soldiers who lost their lives protecting the armor for the Empire. Crosshair then says he's going out to check the perimeter, but really just wants to be able to process everything. He goes out and is followed by Hunter, and Hunter is still suspicious of him and demands for Crosshair to tell him what happened. Crosshair reluctantly does tell him that he betrayed the Empire by killing an Imperial officer, and... He begins to just tell them some of the stuff that happened at the outpost. But before they can really resolve anything else, a large creature comes out and begins to attack them. They quickly realize what the perimeter sensors were for as the two barely make it back inside before the monster could go and eat them. The batch make a plan to go and get rid of the monster and be able to get their ship out, which was partially buried in ice. They begin this by having Crosshair and Hunter go and draw the monster away, but Hunter is knocked into the caves that Crosshair once went through, and not being able to get him out immediately and having to draw the monster away, they are forced to run on and Crosshair will have to find a way to get him out later. Meanwhile, Echo goes up and goes to spot them to see when the monster has left the perimeter. Making it outside of the perimeter, Crosshair and Batcher find a weak patch of snow and begin to dig it up. Crosshair then begins to shoot at the monster to taunt it to come towards them. Wrecker then reaches the power generator to be able to turn the full power to the facility on. And once he reaches it, he contacts Crosshair. Crosshair tells him that they haven't lured the monster out yet and to wait. Once it crosses the perimeter, he tells Wrecker to start it up as he begins to fire on it to distract a little bit so he can go and get Hunter out. He manages to pull him out just in time, and the monster comes out and begins to chase them towards the perimeter sensors where they just barely manage to escape from it. Echo and Omega witness Hunter and Crosshair returning and see that they have seemed to fix their differences. Echo points out to Omega that they actually did better than he expected, and this time they didn't want to draw any blood when they were resolving their issues. They then go into the ship as Crosshair goes and gives Hunter a true, genuine apology for betraying them. As he explains, he thought he was doing what was right, but really didn't realize what the Empire was. Hunter not only accepts his apology, but tells him that he understands that no one in the clones army or the Bad Batch really knew what was going on at the start of the Empire. After fully accepting the apology, the two go and board the ship as they finally leave the outpost behind. A new clone ex-assassin watches as Rex leads Senator Singh and his droid to meet with Senator Chuchi. The two senators begin to discuss many things about the Empire and how they were on different sides in the Clone Wars, but now are on the same side, with them both having problems with the Empire. As this happens, Clone X begins to infiltrate the base, but the clones are quickly able to realize that something is wrong, as they see that they aren't able to contact one of their brothers. 
Rex is told about this. He barely manages to save everyone from a thermal detonator explosion. And after this, they begin a pursuit of Clone X. Heading into the sewers, Rex chases after him as other clones go to cut him off. This works and they are able to capture him and bring him into custody. Rex then contacts Chuchi as they go to interrogate Clone X, telling her that they should go into hiding and keep a low profile while they try to figure things out. They have removed the clone's electric tooth so he can't kill himself. And then Rex is shown that there is a target list that Clone X had. They can't decrypt it yet, but will be doing their best to do so. The clones then go and begin to interrogate Clone X after they reach their base on Teth, who refuses to tell them anything. Meanwhile, on Tantus, Scorch contacts another Clone X and tells him to go and assassinate the Clone X that was just captured since he has been taken into custody and has not ended his own life. With this, the Clone X responds he will do so and goes out to follow the Clone X's hidden tracker. The clones manage to decrypt the target list and realize that Omega is a top priority target. Rex and Hauser begin to debate what they should do, and Rex just wants to let the Bad Batch know, but Hauser points out that they should come here so they could be able to interrogate Crosshair better about everything that happened on Tantus, and Rex reluctantly agrees and contacts the Bad Batch. Still on the way back from their previous mission to the outpost, the Bad Batch go and turn around to meet with Rex. They begin to question what this could be so important, but know that Rex is trustworthy and anything he has would be important. Landing on Teth, they meet up with the other clones. Echo gives Omega a new crossbow and has to leave to go and pick up Gregor from another assignment. Clone X has managed to track down the previous Clone X to, on Teth and watches as Echo's ship leaves. The Bad Batch are told about how the Empire really wants to recapture Omega and while they're doing this, Hauser begins to go off on Crosshair since he doesn't trust him with what happened on Ryloth, and Crosshair does try and defend his actions, but quickly they have to figure out why Omega is wanted, and Omega begins to tell them of everything, and tells them about the experiments with what she says is imp counts, and it being added to Clone Blood, Rex mentions that he has heard of M counts before but isn't fully sure what it is. Clone X begins his infiltration and begins to place thermal detonators throughout the base. Meanwhile, Crosshair begins to tell the other clones of the Clone X program and that this was attempted to be used on him, but him being a defective clone made him be able to resist the changes they were trying to make on the loyal troopers to erase all identifying marks and anything that would make them unique. And they continue to just relax, but Clone X has infiltrated the base and is able to spot that Omega is here. He stops his mission for the moment and goes to contact the Empire to let them know that he has found Vega, and they say that he should continue his mission and they'll send reinforcements to him, and reinforce that she must be taken alive. The Bad Batch are brought to the Clone X, and Crosshair begins to panic, saying that they need to get out of here now because they could track him. The clones reassure him that they removed any tracking devices, not knowing of a hidden one that brought the new Clone X to their location. They begin to interrogate him, but the Clone X is very resistant. 
And this is all cut off as the other clone X begins his attack, setting off thermal detonators that take out a few of the clones. The captured clone X is assassinated and a firefight begins. More clones are lost as they try to contact Echo to go and pick them up since their communications were disabled. And a stray shot causes a clone to drop a flamethrower, which hits a thermal detonator that causes a series of massive explosions. Meanwhile, a Imperial Strike Team, led by Clone Commander Wolf, heads towards Teth to recapture Omega. Wolf makes sure to tell his men to put their weapons on stun to take her alive. The clones in Bad Batch are the first to recover and begin to head out. Seeing that they can't head out that way, they go and begin to go through secret passages to make it to a hidden ship. Meanwhile, the clone X recovers and goes to meet with the other Imperials. Wolf, who is shocked that there are clones here and they're the ones they're going up against, sees clone X and begins to go off on him, saying that the target needs to be taken alive, and he sees a lot of death and destruction here. He is both horrified by the deaths of clones and really doesn't like the fact that Clone X is not following orders. After learning that his communications equipment was destroyed in the explosion, Clone X goes and, against orders, begins to follow the Bad Batch down the tunnel, even though Wolf ordered for it to be destroyed, and his men following his orders go and destroy the tunnel blocking off the entrance so the clones or clone X can't go back the way they came and could be cut off at the exit to the tunnel. He begins to open fire on the clones in Bad Batch, and Crosshair is able to shoot an explosive at him to knock him down from his sniping position, but clone X is able to survive this and continues his pursuit. The clones manage to reach their escape ship, it does not have a hyperdrive, but is able to communicate with Echo to pick them up. But Clone X is able to snipe the engine to the ship and force it to crash land. Wolf is once again furious at Clone X for disobeying orders and saying that their target could have been killed in that crash. And then, knowing that he'll need him, he orders for him to come with and... At the same time, the clones get out of the crashed ship and begin to continue on to a point that Echo could pick them up at. And Crosshair begins to describe to the rest of the clones, specifically Hauser, who is getting to notice the changes in him, what has happened, and how his loyalties changed when he realized that the Empire weren't loyal to him and just saw him as disposable. Hauser is able to understand that and begin to sympathize with him. Meanwhile, the Imperials make it to the crash site and know that the clones are still alive. Making it back to their ship, they continue their pursuit. They rappel down and head towards the new location where the clones are. The clones toss out smoke grenades to be able to silently pick off the Imperials in the smoke and do an effective job of it. Crossraven manages to get off a shot, killing one of the clone pilots, causing his ship to crash. The rest of the Imperials decides Clone X retreat and try to cut him off later. Clone X continues his pursuit, assassinating another clone as Crosshair goes to confront him. And while the rest of the clones go to make it to the rendezvous point, not knowing that Crosshair is going after Clone X, Hauser notices and goes after Crosshair. The two clones begin to fight and they are quickly knocked down towards the waterfall, and Crosshair tries his best to take out Clone X, but is being beaten down by him. He is doing poorly, and he begins to be knocked into the water as Clone X tries to drown him. Crosshair is only saved when Hauser comes and uses a stun blast to knock out Clone X, who falls over the waterfall. Hauser is able to rescue Crosshair, and with the other clones, realizing what was going on, came behind and managed to help Crosshair up and head to a rendezvous point to meet with Echo. But the Imperials get there first. Wolf comes out with a squad of only clones, 
and he is surprised to see Rex is there, knowing that they can't fight their way out. Rex orders everyone to drop their weapons and goes to rezone with Wolf. Wolf takes his helmet off and begins to talk to Rex, telling him he thought he was dead and that he needs to take Omega in. He's a loyal soldier of the Empire and he has to do this. Rex doesn't understand. Rex goes and counters that what they're doing is wrong, that the Empire doesn't care about the clones and is experimenting on them in Tantus, and Omega is a person who can actually prove it. Echo's ship shows up, and Wolf is still in shock, allows them to head up the ramp to the ship. Wolf orders his men to stand down, and Rex looks on with gratitude as the ship leaves the planet of Teth. Wolf then orders for the bodies of all the clones to be recovered, saying that they are still lo loyal men and brothers, and that they have to be respectful with their bodies. After doing this, they go and head out to recover the bodies. Meanwhile, Clone X barely manages to pull himself out of the water, barely being alive. The surviving clones all begin to unite together once again. Meanwhile, Rex and Hunter begin to talk, and Rex tells him that they need to be able to figure out why the Empire wants Omega and be able to protect her better. Hunter says that he knows this and they'll have to go and investigate into it as they both look on a sleeping Omega with Batcher. Omega waits for a communication from Echo. She still feels guilty about everything that happened on Teth and Rex and Echo losing most of the soldiers that were with them with the Empire coming after them. She talks to Crosshair about it and Crosshair says that there's really nothing she could have done, and Hunter comes and reinforces this, saying that they need to keep Omega safe, and she needs to stay behind on Pebu until they are able to figure out what an M count is and why the Empire wants her. They are then contacted by Fee, and after Omega explains to Crosshair who Fee is, they go to meet with her. She informs the Batch that she was not able to figure out what an M count is, but that many high level bounty hunters are going after M count targets for the Empire. And the Batch begin to discuss who they could go to and eventually figure out that Fennec Shand is their best bet. And Fee says that she should be able to find her and get them in contact with her. And the Batch agree and sign off from the communication with her. Hunter then goes and tells Omega she has to stay behind. Omega refuses and wants to go, but Hunter puts his foot down and tells her that it is too dangerous and they can't trust Fennec, so they have to keep her away and she should stay behind with Crosshair. After everyone leaves, Hunter pulls Omega to the side and asks her if she could convince Crosshair to get his hand looked at because doing nothing about it won't get anything any better, and Omega agrees to do so. Fennec is tracked down to a space station, and the Batch go to ask her for her help. They go and send away one of the Rodian clients that she is with, and begin to talk to her about needing the information on M-Count. Fennec says that she specifically hasn't done any of these jobs, but knows people who do and that she'll put them in contact with them if they help her with a job. The Batch reluctantly agree to do so and go off on the mission with Fennec. Crosshair is looked at by AZ, who says that there is nothing medically wrong with him that he could find. He says that everything is most likely psychological, or it could be a result of the experiments done on him. He asks Crosshair to be more specific about the experiments. Crosshair refuses and leaves. Meanwhile, Wrecker goes to Hunter and tells him how he doesn't trust Fennec and this could end badly. Hunter reminds him that they have no real choice and this is their only option and Fennec comes out to tell him about the bounty. This is Siler Cyrus, 
who is an alien that betrayed the Hexian brood by stealing credits from them and has taken out every hunter that has come after him so far. The Batch agree to go after him and they arrive at the world of Velo to go and track him down. Once they're on the planet, Fennec tells them they can't remove their helmets because the air here is toxic. She places on a breath mask and places her helmet on over and then goes to meet with the pit droid that is at the docks. She tells him that she needs a ship and this time it can't be one that's going to quickly sink because that's what happened the last time she went after Asteris. After negotiating a fair price for a ship, they go and head out after him. As they're on the boat, Fennec warns them that they should avoid going into the water because she would never go in there, and it's very dangerous. They eventually reach a point where they find the water has been filled with mines, and after stopping, Fennec tells them to go in. After they point out that she said that they shouldn't go in, she said that she's not going to be going in, but they have to if they want to get the information. The Bad Batch reluctantly agree and head in to start disabling the mines. So they could go and surprise Sarah since he would never expect them to come this way. Meanwhile, on Pabu, Crosshair once again tries to snipe and is still doing poorly. Omega points out that he's still doing better than most. And Crosshair points out that close doesn't matter at all. He's a sniper and he has to be at the top of his game. Omega then goes and tries to comfort him, saying that this probably is all in his head and... She thinks she knows a way that could help him. Meanwhile, the Bad Batch are ambushed by multiple grizzards as they manage to disable the final mines. After finding them off, they manage to get back on the boat and detonate one of the mines, taking the grizzards out and continue on. Fennec begins to talk to the Bad Batch about why they're here and what's going on with Omega. She says that she didn't fail in her last bounty and was called off because her client thought that Omega would be safer with the Bad Batch, but it turns out that wasn't true. And this causes some problems with them, but they quickly reach Cyrus's location and head in to stop him. Fennec points out that she needs to be the lookout, and they need the intel, so they have to do what she says, so Hunter and Wrecker go in alone. Hunter is quickly ambushed by Cyrus, and Wrecker comes to help him. Cyrus then uses one of the many traps in his home to create an escape path for him. They inform Fennec that Cyrus is running through underground tunnels, and she goes after him. Cyrus reaches Fennec's boat and tries to escape. He quickly realizes that she cut the wires and he tries to flee on foot, but is quickly taken down by Hunter, Wrecker, and Fennec, who shoot him with multiple stun blasts that take him down. Fennec then asks for a record to take him, and they'll head back so they can go and collect on the bounty. Meanwhile, back in Pabu, Omega teaches Crosshair how to meditate and says she learned it from her friend Gunji in the Wookiees on Kashyyyk. Crosshair reflects on just how much he has missed and thanks her for this, even though he's not sure it will work. Back on the space station, Fennec talks to Hunter and Wrecker, telling them that she'll be sending the information about M Counts and who they can meet about it once she has it, saying that she doesn't have the information on her. And although they distrust her, they know there's no real other choice and let Fennec leave. As Fennec goes to collect her bounty, she contacts a mysterious contact of hers and tells them that she has found a group of clones that are interested in M Counts and that if they're interested, they should be able to easily enough find them. Omega chases after Batcher into a cave where she discovers a ship. She quickly sees the pilot of the ship, and at the same time, the Bad Batch discussing Fennec's contact, but quickly realize something is wrong. They go down and figure out that this is Fennec's contact who has managed to track them down, and she begins to explain to the Bad Batch what midi-chlorians are and why they're important and could connect someone to the force. Omega thinks that she might be a Jedi and asks if this woman could train her. 
She agrees, and the two go to begin to do tests. The Batch watch from a distance, but Crosshair, who checked in on Tech's old files, recognizes that this is a Sage Ventress, a Separatist war criminal who is responsible for the murder of multiple clones, and they go to confront her about this. Knowing this is going on, Ventress sends Omega to the top of the island to go get a white flower off of the tree at the tip of the mountain, and she must do this before the sunset completes. Omega runs off and runs into Batcher, who she asks for a ride since there's no way she could reach the top of the mountain without her. And Ventress begins to talk to the clones who begin to question her and what she really wants from Omega. Ventress tries to reassure them, but a fight breaks out. Ventress throws their blasters away and begins to fight them hand to hand. She manages to beat them down pretty well until Crosshair is able to get to their blasters and rearms the batch. Meanwhile, Omega has reached the top of the mountain and managed to pick the white flower and begins to head back down. The Bad Batch begin to open fire on Ventress, and she eventually pushes them back and is holding them down. Omega comes in on this and begins to question what's going on. As Hunter tries to explain, Ventress tells him that things have changed since the end of the war and that they're on the same side now. The Batch agree to let her be for the moment and go on the Marauders to discuss things. And Hunter and Crosser both point out that it's a bad idea to trust her. But Omega points out that she hasn't done anything to harm them and easily could have killed them. She also points out that she had faith in Crosshair to be able to change, even though they have doubts that Ventress could change. She has confidence that she did. So the Bad Batch agree to let Ventress test Omega to see if she is Force-sensitive. Omega's final test is to go out to the middle of the sea and try and connect with the Force. The Bad Batch watch from a distance, but Ventress is able to spot them, and Wrecker wonders how she's able to do that. Omega is not able to connect to the Force, and she asks Ventress how it's possible. Ventress shows her by using it to summon a bunch of fish that circle the ship. But this unknowingly summons a larger fish that comes and begins to attack them. Still watching the Bad Batch head to the Marauder to go and try and save them. Ventress goes underwater to rescue Omega and the Bad Batch begins to open fire on the large fish. Omega then tells them to back off as Ventress has this. Ventress is able to use the force to go and calm the creature down and it leaves. They then help both Omega and Ventress onto the ship and head out. They then go and talk to Ventress who tells them that Omega is not force sensitive and she considers herself lucky because that would make her a high priority target. Omega says that she already is and heads off with Wrecker. Ventress then warns Crosshair and Hunter that they should not be on Fabu anymore. If she was able to track Omega here, the Empire will be able to. Both Hunter and Crosshair think she's lying about something, but Ventress doesn't say anything about it, and she gets into her ship and leaves the planet. Meanwhile, across the galaxy, a mother and her child go shopping. The mother places her child down for just a moment, so she can go and look at flowers. But the child drops his toy and goes to pick it up, but has to get a vase out of the way first. This startles and disturbs the people who realize that a baby shouldn't have that strength. Now that we can talk about it, as the mother takes her kid away, they mention they shouldn't be saying anything because it could be getting people in trouble. But one of the people watching an Aqualish goes and contacts a bounty hunter to try and get a payout for this information. Meanwhile, Dr. Hemlock continues his research, and Emery goes to meet with him. She says that the experiments have went to a halt after Nalise was imprisoned. Hemlock says that was necessary, and Emery says that she understands, but 
They need a new head scientist saying that it should be her. Hemlock agrees and brings her into Project Necromancer. There she is brought before multiple children who are being experimented on. And although she does try to go and be friendly to them, Hemlock tells her not to when they are only test subjects. Meanwhile, the mother and her child are spending time together, but Cad Bane breaks in, shoots her with a stun blast, and begins to test the child's blood. After confirming that the child is Force-sensitive, he tells Toto to take the child. Toto does so, and to keep the baby quiet, gives him his toy, and the two go to bring the bounty to the Empire. After they go and pay off the Aqualish who gave them the tip, not listening to Hemlock, Emery begins to get to know the test subjects and realizes that they are children that were kidnapped and just wanted to return home. Moving to another one, he steals the data pad of hers and tries to use it to escape, but an alarm is set off before he can do so, and Scorch comes in shooting him with a stun blast, even though Emery demands he doesn't do it. Scorch only replies that there was an escape attempt and he had to use appropriate force. Emery then has to reassure one of the children that he will be okay and wouldn't be punished for this, even though she doesn't have control over that. She then goes to meet with Nalise to see what is going on, and Nalise said that she did have her problems and tried to help them out the best that she could, but her priority was to protect Omega, and she tells Emery that she could be able to help them, and she's in a position to do so. Emery then goes to meet with Hemlock and Scorch, and Hemlock says that Scorch is going to pick up another asset for the program, and Emery demands to go along. Hemlock says he will let her do this, and he goes off to meet with Wilhuff Tarkin. Hemlock and Tarkin discuss many things, as Hemlock says he can't reveal what his project's about. Tarkin says there'll be big problems for him if he can't keep his spending down and doesn't have any results. They then sign off, and Hemlock begins to look at the different prototypes he has for his experiments. He then contacts Clone X, who says he has tracked down Sid and got information on someone the Bad Batch is in contact with, and is following up with that lead. Emery and Scorch arrive above Coruscant to meet with Cad Bane. After meeting with him, Emery goes to check on the child, realizing it's a baby. She does do a test to make sure he is Force-sensitive, and disappointingly to her, he is. She then watches as Bane is paid, and they return to Tantus. Emery tries to check on the young child, but gets no real updates from the medical droids. She then goes to check on another, who is angry at her for lying to her about her friend not being punished for his escape attempt. She finally goes back to her office and begins to look through the files of different people, including Omega, and decides to leave the doll Omega made for one of the children. Meanwhile, Fee goes and lands at a space station to get her ship refueled. While it happens, Clone X infiltrates her ship and begins to download her flight log, and after he does that, he sneaks off. Fee is suspicious and thinks someone's on her ship, but once she reaches the boarding ramp, she realizes no one is there. But Clone X has managed to get the information and escapes, discovering the location of Pebu. He goes and contacts Scorch to tell him that he has found the potential location of Omega. Scorch tells him to go and search for her, and if he finds her, to contact him again. And he'll send an army that he is preparing to reinforce him. Meanwhile, in Pebu, the clones have taken Ventress's warning into account and are preparing to leave the island. Omega goes and says goodbye to her one good friend there, and leaves as a memorial text glasses and her doll to have a memory of them and this island forever, since she doesn't know if she'll ever be able to return. 
Meanwhile, Rex rolling up the ship with as many supplies as possible, since they don't know how long they'll be out. Clone X lands on the planet and begins to scout out for Omega. He is eventually able to find her and gets in contact with the Empire to go and send their forces to his location. He is also informed to kill and destroy anything that will get in his way of his objective. The Batch go and make their final goodbyes with the people of Habu, and they're told they can return any time. Wrecker is loading the final crates onto the Marauder when Clone X shoots multiple explosives onto the ship. Wrecker is able to notice it and begins to run and grabs Gonki to save him. But they are just a little too late and both are thrown into the water by the massive explosion destroying the Marauder. Reaching to Wrecker's location, who was pulled out of the water, the rest of the batch are relieved to see that he is still alive, but know that this was no accident, which is quickly confirmed as a Venator class Star Destroyer appears over the island and launches multiple gunships filled with troops. Wrecker is brought up to be treated, and the others go to hide. Clone X meets with his troopers and orders them to bomb every ship and every boat so Omega has no chance of escape. They follow the orders exactly and destroy every non-imperial ship on the island. Realizing that there is no way out and all communications are being jammed, the Batch make a plan for Hunter to go and steal a gunship and be able to get out far enough to contact Echo to organize a rescue. While well, Crosshair goes with Omega to Wrecker so they could all be together and protect their brother. They agree to do this and head out. Meanwhile, the mayor and head of Pabu goes and confronts the Imperials, saying they have no right to be here and destroy their stuff. Clone X simply responds that they're hiding a fugitive here and that they'll do whatever they have to to get them. And if they don't cooperate, they'll be soon burning down houses and destroying the island until she is found. This is followed by people being pulled out of their homes as it is searched from top to bottom by Imperial troops. As they're trying to sneak up, they find multiple troopers, and Batcher decides to cause a distraction, wanting to protect the people of the island. Although Omega wants to go after him, Crosshair says that Batra can look after herself, and they need to continue moving up. So they do so, and eventually make it to Wrecker. Omega then looks out upon the city, and sees how the people are being treated, and realizes this is all her fault. She feels very guilty about this, and doesn't want this to continue. Hunter fights through Imperial troops as he heads towards a gunship that is launching. He makes it on and knocks the troops off. The pilot tries to fly around crazy to knock him off and Omega and Crosshair watch this. The pilot says he can't do anything to get him off and Clone X simply executes the pilot causing the shuttle to crash into the ocean. Knowing it is inevitable and not wanting anyone else to be hurt. Omega decides that she's going to give herself up to the Imperials to end all this. Crosshair strictly disagrees with her, but Omega points out that there's no real choice, and this is the only way for them to find the location of Tantis, that she'll be able to sneak a communicator with her and use it to transmit their location and get everyone to Tantis. Crosshair points out that the Imperials will simply find that and she says that then Crosshair would be able to shoot a tracker onto the ship that she's taken away in and track her to Tantis. Crosshair again disagrees with her, but knowing that Omega is going to be doing this no matter what, reluctantly agrees to the plan. As Imperials prepare to go and burn down the homes of Pabu, Omega comes to them to surrender. Clone X, sensing a trap, has her scanned and, as Crosshair predicted, finds Omega's tracking device. She gives it to him and then is taken away by them. Hunter pulls himself back to the island and begins with Batcher to head towards the city. Omega is brought on board Clone X's shuttle 
as Crosshair goes and tries to fight off Imperial troops who discovered him as he tries to shoot the tracking device onto Clonex's ship. He attempts to do so after taking the troops, but is just a second too late and the ship flies away as the tracking device goes to the spot it was only a second before. The now disappointed Omega waits on board Clone Nexus ship as he contacts the Imperials to let him know that he has the target and is bringing her to Mount Tantus. Omega is brought by Clone X into custody to Dr. Hemlock who brings her to Emery so she can begin her tests on Omega to confirm everything that they suspect. Omega then begs for Emery not to do any of this, but Emery says she has no choice. On Pabu, the remaining members of the Bad Batch reunite, and although Wrecker is furious at Crosshair for letting Omega surrender herself, Crosshair points out that there was no real choice here, and that everyone would have been killed if she didn't surrender herself. And as they begin to discuss what they could do, Crosshair mentions that he thinks he might know a way to figure out where Tantus is. And they point out that there's really no point since they can't even get off the planet. At that time, B, who returned to Pabu and seeing the Imperial presence there, landed her ship in a hidden location and went up through tunnels to get to the batch and agrees to take them to be able to get the information they need to be able to save Omega from Tantus. And the information they need to get is from the former Admiral Rampart, who, after being exposed by the Bad Batch as the person who destroyed Camino, was put into an Imperial prison camp. Crosshair mentions how he knows that there was some stuff that Rampart did with Tantus, and that he should know the location. Fee has managed to get a schematic of the entire location in the Bad Batch to get to plan their infiltration of the base. And once they arrive at the planet, Fee has to shut down the engines completely and let her ship fly into the atmosphere fully based off of the gravity to avoid the Imperial sensors. But she is able to get down, starts the engines just in time, and drops the Bad Batch off, who begin to infiltrate the prison facility. Rampart, alongside his other prisoners, are being offloaded from the works that they were at onto a juggernaut tank to be returned to the prison. And the Bad Batch managed to intercept the tank as it passes by, and using grapple hooks, they board the tank. And entering into it, they easily dispatch the troopers and go to let off all the prisoners besides Rampart so they can be able to question him and have a distraction for the Imperials to deal with. Beginning to question Rampart, they realize that the only way to get information from him is to get him out of the prison and set him free. They reluctantly agree to this with Rampart. The Imperials, now noticing the hijacked juggernaut and prison break, order for gunships to be sent and the other juggernaut to be deployed to prevent this escape attempt. The two juggernauts begin to fire upon each other, but being more experienced in veterans of the Clone Wars, the Bad Batch know the weak points of the juggernaut and fire multiple attacks upon the wheels of it. Taking it out, they use the juggernaut as a ramp to jump over it, and then they speed past the prison in the Imperial base as the gunships begin to head out and approach the Juggernaut. The Bad Batch go on contact V saying they're clear of the prison and ask for a pickup. The Batch managed to take out one of the gunships, but the other begins to send the troops off who go and destroy the cannons on the Juggernaut, so there is no way for the Batch to fight back. But Fee manages to come in, destroying the other gunship to pick them up. The Bad Batch bring an unconscious 
Rampart with them and managed to get to the ship. Once they escape, the Bad Batch begin to question Rampart, who tells them that he doesn't know the location of Tantus and that no one does. But he does tell them that he does have a way, he thinks that they could figure out where it is. Back on Tantus, Emery is able to confirm the results of Omega's blood, and Hemlock comes in to confirm on this. He then takes Omega with him to the room where the other young Force-sensitive children are being kept, and he tells her that this is now her new home. On Tantus, Omega goes and begins to meet the different kids that have been imprisoned and begins to learn about their life here. Echo meets up with the remaining members of the Bad Batch and the recently liberated Rampart. The group go and begin to plan their attack to get to Tantus, where Rampart tells them about the only way to get the coordinates is to go to a station orbiting Coruscant. There the coordinates are beamed to a shuttle that goes to Tantus, and as they begin to plan the mission, Omega is getting her tests done by Emery, and she begins to ask her how long have the kids been here and what's going on. Emery does give some answers, but takes the sample and goes back up to the lab. There she is questioned where the other scientists think it's not a good idea to have Omega here, but Emery says that she's the head of the program and that things will be run her way. Meanwhile, in the lower level, Omega begins to meet with the other kids and begins to tell them that she has escaped here once before and is planning to do so again. She uses some blocks to represent a diagram of the base they're in and begins to say that she has a plan to escape and she'll be bringing them with her. The Bad Batch strip their armor of all paint to be able to better infiltrate the Imperials. And they then go to infiltrate the base, bringing Rampart along with them, having him disguised as a captain. Rampart is at first absolutely disgusted and doesn't want to be impersonating a captain, saying he was once a vice admiral. The clones really don't care. And after making sure to let him know that they do not trust him and that he better not cross them since they're the ones who freed him, Wrecker is ordered to stay behind with the ship, so. He could take it for their escape, and the Batch go out and meet the Imperial officer. Rampart is able to get his way through, threatening him that he works for Governor Tarkin, and this scares them man away enough for Rampart and the Bad Batch to go into the base. Rampart leads them to the facility that would send out the coordinates, and he is able to get the troopers to return to their barracks using very threatening terms to them that they'll be punished. The troopers leave and the Bad Batch go in, quickly take out the guards, and there they begin to hack into the system. Meanwhile, the Imperial at the docking station begins to become suspicious of the Bad Batch, and Wrecker is forced to knock him out. He contacts Hunter about this and tells him they need to hurry up, and the Bad Batch do so. They quickly realize after Echo breaks through the encryption that the coordinates are not sent to the ship until it has left Fort Hantus, and they have to find a way to intercept it before it jumps to hyperspace. They begin to get a plan where Echo will get on the ship, disable its proximity sensors, and let the Bad Batch dock with it. The clones agree to this besides Rampart, who really doesn't like the plan, but the clones really don't care. Omega manages to get a tool from Dr. Carr and uses it to find a way to escape. She's quickly able to seal it back up before another doctor comes to check on her, and she then goes to her new friends and tells them that she has a way to escape. Echo continues to sneak on board the ship, and after managing to do so, it launches, and Hunter loosely follows it from behind. As they continue to get further and further, Rampart doesn't like where this is going and tries to demand for Hunter to stop, and that there's no way this is going to work. They all once again ignore him, and Echo continues to hack in 
and is able to get it. The Bad Batch are quickly able to attach their shuttle to the ship right before it launches into hyperspace. Still stowing away on the Imperial ship, the Bad Batch prepare their plan to infiltrate Tantus. And while Rampart is still fully against everything and just wants to go back, the Bad Batch ignore him and continue on with their plans. Meanwhile, on board the Imperial ship itself, Echo has managed to take out one of the TK troopers and brings him away to take his uniform. On Tandis itself, Scorch reports to Dr. Hemlock, telling him that the Bad Batch was reported at the facility above Coruscant. And taking no chances, Hemlock orders for all Imperial forces to be alert and sends a squadron of V-Wings into the planet's atmosphere to make sure that none of the Bad Batch members are able to infiltrate Tantis on the off chance that they were able to sew away on the ship. Once the Bad Batch have arrived on Tantis, they disconnect from the Imperial ship and begin to head towards Mount Tantis. They are quickly ambushed by Imperial forces and have to avoid fire, although the ship takes multiple hits. Meanwhile, in Tantis, Omega begins to talk with the other kids as they hear and feel the turbo laser fire against the Bad Batch. The kids begin to wonder what's going on, but Omega is quickly able to figure out that her brothers have come to rescue her and begins to enact her plan for escape. Emery puts the other doctors in charge as she goes to check what's going on. Meanwhile, the Bad Batch are forced to abandon their shuttle using the troop deployment cables to get into the forest of Wayland. And that is just in time as the shuttle is shortly destroyed after. While Hemlock orders for everyone on board the Imperial ship to have their identity checked to make sure that no one else stowed away on the ship. After putting on the TK Trooper's armor, Echo goes and begins to go through the ship's systems as Scorch leads a group of troopers to not only investigate every Imperial that came off the ship, but also to make sure that no one is left on board the ship. The Bad Batch were quickly separated in the landing, but still quickly managed to find each other, and after discussing their disappointment that Rampart survived, they move forward to go and infiltrate Tantus. At the same time, Echo manages to take out a droid on the Imperial ship and takes his hand off so he can use it to cover up his scomp link so he can go and better infiltrate the troopers. Putting the first plans of her escape plan into motion, Omega tells the other kids to go and distract the Imperials that come in and stall for time as she goes through the walls to try and find the best possible method of escape for them. The kids agree to you, and Omega pulls panels off the wall once again and begins to go through the walls of Tantus. Crosshair and Rampart begin to discuss Crosshair's loyalty, and Crosshair points out that he was wrong about good soldiers following orders, and it all depends on the person who's giving to them if they should be followed. Rampart says that Crosshair is only selfish and that he is no different from him. Crosshair disagrees, but Rampart believes he is right. They catch back up to the main group and Rampart still says that they shouldn't be doing this. They are quickly ambushed by one of the little predators of Wayland. And while Rampart demands that they should use their blasters, the Bad Batch point out that it will just draw Imperial troops to them. Rampart points out that it doesn't really matter too much if they get discovered by the Imperials if they're dead. And after realizing that they're going to be fighting this off hand to hand, Rampart runs away in terror. The Bad Batch do poorly against the Predator and after Rucker has a giant gash across his armor, they begin to retreat. They are quickly spotted by Imperials and are forced into a firefight 
but are thankfully saved from many more as the Predator goes and begins to attack the Imperials as the Bad Batch uses an opportunity to escape. Rampart is recaptured by the Imperial forces. Dr. Scalder comes in to check on the kids, and they begin to stall so Omega can't have enough time to get back. Meanwhile, Omega has discovered that the Zello Beast is being held on Pantus, and the kids continue to stall to make sure that Omega can get back in time. Their stalling works, and Omega is back in time before Dr. Scolder comes to her cell to check on her. After escaping the hangar, Echo makes it inside of the lab and begins to investigate into everything going on here. Dr. Emery comes in and she sees him in there. Although he's still disguised as a trooper, she quickly figures out that it is Echo and tells him that she's the only way to help Omega. Echo takes off his helmet, confirming it is him, and goes to listen to her. As Omega goes and begins to discuss the kids, the plan that she has now made for them to escape. At the same time, Hemlock goes to Rampart's cell, mainly just to gloat about how important he is and how Rampart has become irrelevant and that he is completely indispensable to the Empire and they couldn't get rid of him like they did to Rampart. Emery tells Echo about her change of heart and how Omega helped bring that out in her, and Echo decides that he can trust her and begin to move through the facility. Omega puts in the final motions for her plan, telling the kids to be able to get the medical droid alone so they can reprogram it. They do so and use it to knock out Dr. Scalder and go to Omega's room where she takes the panels off the wall and they begin their escape. Omega leads them to the Zillow's containment cell and she goes to disable the containment field. And although the kids are discovered, Omega is able to release the Zillow beast in time, forcing the troopers to put their attention on that. Emery and Echo reach the containment area where they find Hemlock and Scorch, supervising Dr. Scalder being taken away. Emery begins to ask what has happened, and Hemlock tells her that Omega and the kids took advantage of Dr. Scalder and used it to escape. He said that they will be recaptured and told Emery to make sure that they are because her fate was now tied with Omega's. They are then informed about the escape of the Zillow Beast, forcing Hemlock and Swartz to go and deal with that. And after they leave, Echo begins to discuss with Emery that Omega has released the Zillow Beast and used it as a distraction to better their chances of escape. And after finding out that he's pretty proud in her, they go off to find Omega. Once they've reached Mount Tantus and see the defenses, Crosshair begs for his brothers to go find the communication station and contact Rex to assist them, and that he'll go and deal with the facility security. Both Hunter and Wrecker refuse to, saying that they're in this together, and that they'll be with Crosshair and don't want him to be sacrificing himself. They then witness as the Zillow Beast tears through the walls of the facility, and escapes into Wayland's jungle. Seeing this as a good opportunity, they head towards the location to be able to infiltrate Tantus. As Omega leads the kids on, she has to reassure one of them, who was afraid of heights, that it is fine. One of her brothers is afraid of heights, and he's still one of the bravest soldiers she's ever met. And they continue on to head up the ladder and head to the hangar. Hemlock is told of the Zillow's escape, and is furious. He orders for Scorch to send out their fighters to go after it. And when Scorch points out that the rogue clones will be using this to be able to better infiltrate the facility, Hemlock knows that will happen and goes to activate his clone X's. And the clones go to the point where the Zillow escaped from and easily take down the Bad Batch, 
the primary clone X that has been hunting down the Bad Batch takes one of his fellow brother's blades and uses it to cut off Crosshair's hand. Still moving through the facility, Echo runs across his brothers who have been captured, but knowing it's more important to save Omega and the kids first, he continues on to that, using the fact that he sees what Omega is doing again, asks where the next hanger was, and if I'm going to do a shortcut, she did, and he goes up and is able to save the kids just in time as they are discovered by TK troopers. Echo gives Emery the coordinates of somewhere safe to go with the kids, but him and Omega have to go back to the facility to go and save the Bad Batch and the other clones. First freeing the other clones, Echo goes and begins to give a speech that, although they can stay here and they've already sacrificed enough, he asks them for his help to go and save his brothers. The clones all agree to help, and Nalise goes up to Omega and begins to tell her that she is going to make sure that the Empire's records are destroyed and their project can never be continued. She says goodbye to Omega and heads off to do just that. Hemlock is contacted by Tarkin, who is furious at him, and tells him that he'll be arriving soon to make sure that Hemlock has everything under control. Meanwhile, Rampart begins to follow Nalise to see what she is up to. He holds her at Blaster Point in the lab and demands to know everything about Project Necromancer. Echo and Omega lead an attack with the fellow clones to go and rescue Hunter, Wrecker, and Crosshair. Omega goes and tries to disable the containment cells holding her brothers, but Hemlock comes in and grabs her to stop her. He then releases a gas to go and knock out all the troopers. Now the say finishes telling Rampart everything and being extremely intrigued and knowing that this would give him leverage to use against the Empire to have them leave him alone. He wants to take the information. Now the say refuses to let him do anything. So Rampart decides to execute the Kaminoan. Unknown to him, she was holding a thermal detonator behind her back, which she drops and, not having enough time to escape, it detonates, killing Rampart and destroying all information about the project. As Rampart begins to glow about his victory, he's informed by Scorch about the destruction of the lab. Omega points out that he's also lost, and Hemlock, although furious, says that he still has her, and he could restart everything with her. Omega then points out that she still has her brothers, as Wrecker breaks through his containment field, which was deactivated by Omega, and the other Bad Batch members are freed too. They begin to fight against the Clonex troopers, and Hemlock grabs Omega, attaching a pair of binders to have them be stuck together and takes the primary clone X's communication device so he can contact his ship for escape. Wrecker tackles one of the clone X's and tells Hunter and Crosshair to go after Omega. Him and Echo take out two more of the clone X's as Hunter and Crosshair take out the primary clone X before chasing after Omega. Echo and Wrecker manage to take down the final clone X and after being beaten down, Echo tries to figure out where the rest have gone, but Wrecker is far too tired to tell him that and passes out. A storm begins on Tantus as Hemlock orders for the ship to come to him, but it is taken down by a well-placed shot, as is Scorch, who is taken down after being hit by multiple rounds of blaster fire. Hemlock holds Omega prisoner and says that if he goes down, so does she. Omega stabs him with her lockpick, and that causes him to be separated just enough for Crosshair to get off a shot, destroying the binders between them, and him and Hunter open fire on Hemlock, killing him. Omega gratefully reunites with her brothers, hugging both of them, and the Bad Batch, alongside all the clones they've liberated, 
escape from Tantus and head to Pebu. Mere moments after their escape, Tarkin arrives in a newly created Imperial Star Destroyer. He then goes down to the facility, seeing the destruction and seeing that there was nothing that they could do to salvage anything. He orders for all funding to be cut from this project and directed into Project Stardust. Echo watches as the freed clones and the people of Pabu get together and being very satisfied with this, he just continues to watch on as Hunter and Omega begin to discuss their future. Hunter says he doesn't want to be doing any more fighting and they've done enough for a lifetime and that they're just going to stay on Pabu, relax, and retire. The remaining members of the Bad Batch, besides Echo, come sit beside the two and Batcher and watch as everything else continues around them. Years later, the height of the Galactic Civil War, Omega goes to leave Pebu to join the Rebellion as a fighter pilot. She is stopped by Hunter, who wants to see her off, and the two share a very emotional moment. As Hunter wishes her the best of luck and for her to be safe, Omega points out that she is no longer a little kid and that she has been trained to take care of herself. Although Hunter does offer to go with her, Omega says they've already fought their war and this is hers to fight. She then boards the Bad Batch's new ship. She looks at Tex goggles, which she has laying on the dashboard, and preparing to take off. She looks upon Hunter one last time, who watches as the ship rises and leaves as Omega goes to join the Rebel Alliance. Hunter just watches, very satisfied with what life has brought him, and wishing Omega the best of luck. Thank you for watching this episode of Legends and Theories. Please subscribe, like the video, share the video, leave a comment, check out the video on screen. And may the force be with you.